Goya's Ghosts is a movie with imagery so stunning you'd think it might have been made precisely for that purpose alone. The spectacles in this film are a masterpiece in their own right, much like the original Goya prints gazed upon by the architects of the Inquisition in the beginning of this movie. This, despite drawing attention from the storyline, paints an ugly picture of citizens sullied by the era and the surroundings under which they lived. The priests in the film are not pleased with the negative way in which Goya presented Spain. Ironically, this lacks historical accuracy as the prints they are displeased with were in fact created by the artist a quarter century after this film was set. However, seeing as this movie is a work of fiction, we will overlook this fact. The movie features a number of personalities who were indeed real people that once existed. However, they doubtfully really did much of what they portrayed as doing in this movie. Featured in this movie are a Spanish artist played by Stellan Skarsgård, Inquisition father Brother Lorenzo played by Javier Bardem, and the gorgeous young daughter of a traitor Inez Bilbatua played by Natalie Portman. Goya requests Inez to stand and pose to help him give inspiration for the angles he draws. Goya also paints for the court, worked on a painting of Queen Maria Luisa played by Blanca Portillo in addition to an assignment from Father Lorenzo, who is enamored with his talents. In one scene, Inez is captured and charged with being a Jew at a tavern. She is subjected to torment and insults until she confesses. Her father, played by Jose Luis Gomez, approaches Goya, requesting him to step in and rescue her from this situation alongside Lorenzo, deepening their ties with each other. They euphemized her torment as being put to the question to hide the atrocious nature of the aggressive purging of dissidents. Since God gave everyone strength to profess the truth, they believed no language in this situation was possible. The young girl's father in disagreement argues that under torture, people will indeed lie just to avoid the torment, a long pre-existing belief. In a cruel comparison with Monty Python, Variety presents this debate in one of the movie's scenes. Over a decade later, the Inquisition is ended by Napoleon's conquest of Spain. In exile, Lorenzo agrees to the terms of the French Revolution and begins serving Napoleon, proving the guilt of offenders. One of his assignments, putting former Inquisitor General, played by Michael Lonsdale, in prison. All the while, Inez ends up being released from jail along with her little daughter. This film features enough people opposing the zeitgeist, sorrow, and randomness to make Voltaire smile from the grave. With all of the shock and tragedy taking place in this movie, one becomes lost to pinpoint who exactly the main protagonist is. One's intuition would point to Lorenzo, but every one of their lives is claimed by the merciless bloodlust of the times. Unlike Amadeus by Foreman, I wasn't able to feel a particularly close connection with any one of the characters. Be that as it may, the imagery and drama representing the times were plenty compensation. For instance, early in the movie, King Carlos IV's men, spectacularly played by Randy Quaid, toss out an animal corpse for vultures in a field to come flying in after. As they tear the corpse apart, they are all nailed by the king and his gun like pheasants. Then, after snatching up a few rabbits and tossing them in a sack, Maria Luisa requests to eat the vultures instead. Props are featured that further underscore the shamelessness of the brothels, all the morbid elements surrounding everyday life, the sulliness of the dungeons, the over-the-top extravagance of castles, and the lack of civility in the taverns. The roles are all played with enormous detail to their personalities, especially for how many subplots are taking place in the film. The way Goya is presented by Skarsgård is a warm-hearted artist with a jubilant, sincere smile and a swagger to live by his own rules. 
Bardem's character is a man who wants a lot for himself, with a small tendency to act beyond the pale, and that being an inquisitor is an ethereal noble endeavor, despite the factor that he is furthering the Emperor's ambitions. The way that Natalie Portman performs her role as a gorgeous young lady suffering from torment and accusations, and then Alicia, the prostitute, is very convincing. Quaid, minor as his role may be as the king, performs well on the violin while humbly conceding that he himself wrote the composition. The actor was an unusual choice to play this role. Leslie Schatz produced impeccable sound for this movie, which added a significant amount of dimension to it. The sound effects of the church door, steps, bells, and flesh tearing are very realistic, though could have been made more empathetic. The job done by cinematographer Javier Aguirre Sarobe is a truly work of art, as one can see immediately by looking at the shadows, coloring, and imagery. A lot of critics tore apart Goya's Ghosts in Europe after its recent premiere there. The reviews were hard to believe or ignore, as many people weren't kind at all mentioning some of the sound effects and how boring and confusing they were. Just because these reviewers might have preferred a different direction for the film, doesn't mean that they shouldn't give it a chance to the route that Foreman took with it. Jean-Claude Carrier and Foreman are not people you imagine as challenged when it comes to their ability to tell an ordinary narrative. Their intent in this film is hinted at the beginning where the Goya prints are featured. They each leave their own fingerprints at some point or other in this film. Goya's ghosts can be regarded as what is his original works would look like in the form of film. 